Hello. Come on over. I have something to show you. Okay, guys, you probably guessed it. It's my day off again. Um, a very good friend of mine, Thomas. Thank you, Thomas. He got a good deal on, on three of these. Dicey back. On three of these British Army knives. Um, they were unissued, but they did have some rust. They were also coated in Cosmoly, and they looked, they looked uh, quite rough when we got them. But um, a little bit of sandpaper and uh, some oil and some cleaning up. They're not looking too bad now. One thing I can say is they don't make knives like these anymore. This is quite a piece of steel. Um, the blade is quite thick and robust. The back springs... The back springs are really strong. If you close this one on your hand, you're doing something retarded. You have the Maryland spike for undoing your knots. It's a little bit pitted, but I'm, I'm working on it. I'm polishing it off and trying to get it as smooth as I can. This should be useful for uh, any overtight knots. Okay, you've got the can opener and bottle opener. Quite a robust piece of, uh, of steel. And you've got the main blade. Uh, this wasn't sharpened, but kind of like the open L's, a small bit of work, and it, um, it took a very good edge indeed. Let's just see, can we zoom in on this? So it's, it's shaving sharp, but only a very small amount of work. Quite impressed. It's, it's quite a roughly finished knife, so it is. And there was quite some play in the blade when I got it. But it was, it was very easy to tighten. I simply took a ball peen hammer to these rivets. A few solid smacks and it's tight as could be now. To be honest, I wish all working knives were, were still made like this. This is so simple to tighten up a loose blade. These rivets are quite rough. Um, I don't know whether to file them down or whether to take a hammer to them and, and flatten them off. Now I know there's some pretty knowledgeable guys perhaps looking in on this video. So I'd be very grateful for any advice from anyone out there. What should I do with these guys? You have a, a good solid bale on it. I haven't used the blade a lot, but I have a sneaking suspicion that it's, it's a quite a decent piece of steel. When you're cutting with the knife, this can opener is quite sharp against your palm. You don't feel these rough rivets at all, surprisingly enough. But this, this portion here, this heel of the, uh, the heel of the Maryland spike, that does dig in pretty pretty well into your hand. If you were to do a lot of work with this knife you'd need gloves on. Now as a knife it's, it's quite interesting and I'm very happy to have it. But we must remember this is also a piece of militaria. Similar knives to this have been in production since the Boer War. They've seen a lot of history. These ones were uh, produced in 1956 and were unissued. We have to remember knives like these were carried by many millions of, of people who served in the British Army and who fought and indeed died uh, to protect their way of life. When you hold something like this in your hand, it's a sobering connection to the many millions of people in, in many different countries around the world who fought and died to give us the freedom that we have today. It annoys me when I hear people say that they don't bother to go and vote. People fought and died and gave up their lives so, so that we can have the right to vote and that we can have our own countries and our own freedoms and you shouldn't forget these people. And a knife like this to me is a connection or a reminder of those people. Anyway folks, that's my British Army folding knife. I'm very happy to have it. Uh, it's a piece of history. And Thomas, thank you very much again. 
Now, I'm going to have a cold beer. Bottle openers are handy. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.